study of evil. As we are continuing on this study, let me find back what we're talking about. We're talking about misery, pain, and suffering. And boy, is this coming up at the right time. But misery, pain, and suffering. Someone somewhere every day, every hour is in misery, pain, and suffering. You may not be. Someone is. And I hate to say it, but your day is coming. As you turn to Esther chapter 8, verse 6. Um, I don't know. I'm just thinking inside my head. Is there anybody who has never suffered? Never had pain? That's a hard question. Esther 8, 6. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come upon my people, Jewish, how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Haman has set forth a plot. Like Adolf Hitler, Haman is going to try to eliminate every Jew. And he didn't even get a chance like Adolf Hitler. And it's the murdering of masses by Haman. And there would be no mercy. There would be suffering and pain throughout. This was the witness by the Nazi party to the Jews. Many of the prisoners died in consecration camps due to deliberate, deliberate mistreatment, disease, starvation, and overwork. Or they were ex executed as unfit for labor. Prisoners were transported to inhumane conditions by rail freight cars, in which many died before reaching their final destination. The prisoners were con confined in boxcars for days or even weeks, with little or no food or water. Many died of dehydration in the intense heat of summer or froze to death in the winter. Consecration camps also existed in Germany itself. While they were not specifically designed for systematic ex extermination, many of their inmates perished because of harsh conditions or they were executed. After 1942, many subcamps were set up near factories to provide forced labor. I.G. Furbin established synthetic rubber plant in 1942 at Monowich, Consecration Camp, Auschwitz III. Other camps were set up next to airplane factories, coal mines, rocket propelled plants. Conditions were brutal, and prisoners were often sent to gas chambers or killed on site if they did not work quick enough. Wow, you better thank God and that God's blessed us in America that, you know, after 40 hours we get, you know, time and a half and we get paid for holidays or we get holidays off. This nation is not giving God thanks. This nation is not honoring God. There's more to come. Towards the end of the war, the camps became sites for medical experiments, eugenic experiments, freezing prisoners to death, how, how down pilots were affected by exposure. Oh, freezing patient prisoners to death to determine how downed pilots were affected by exposure. And experimental and lethal medicines were all tried at various camps. Cold water immersion experiments at Jukal consecration camp was performed by Sig Sigmund Roger. And you wait till the Antichrist comes. You wait till Antichrist sets up and he's going to murder much more Jewish people who are the children of God than Adolf Hitler. So Job 2.20, Job 2.11. So this evil is the murdering of Jews. And I'm sorry. You know, these people, black, these black in, in, in America, oh, you know, 
And we were slaves and slavery and you know, we want you to pay us for, for our, the treatment of our great grandparents and all that. You don't have and never had the treatment that the Jewish people have. As a matter of fact, if you read the book of Exodus chapter 1, Egyptian colored people had the Jewish people serve with rigor. Okay? Now I support Jewish people. I pray for the children of Israel and the peace in Jerusalem. I will witness to black people. I will witness to white people. I will witness to brown people. I will uh, preach to yellow people. But the African American, the African is not the nation above, above all nations, the BLM. The nation of Israel, the Jewish, the Hebrews are God's people. Jesus Christ was Jewish. You don't like what I said? That's absolutely tough. Why is it black lives matter and no other lives matter? Why is there a national council for colored people, but there's no national council for... Okay? I've got many black friends. I like black people, but I stand tall with Israel. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, uh, he lost all his livestock, the servants. Livestock was, was taken by uh, invading armies. His livestock was killed. It was uh, acts of nature, acts of God, insurance companies call it. His children were killed in one afternoon in one house. He had suffered from boils from head to toe. And if you ever had a boil, I had two boils in my life, two different times, and that was enough. And then it's why does that attain a curse integrity? Curse God and die. And you never heard from Job's wife again. Later on you hear about his children. That's all evil. They came everyone from his own place. Eliphaz the team night. Bildad the Shuhite, Zophar the Nevenite, for they had made an appointment together to come and mourn with him and to comfort him. And the evil here is the loss of belonging, the loss of life, and the extreme mental condition he had. The evil is lost. Outside of the boils, you would see this, and it was a whirlwind, and Many say the whirlwind is a tornado. But tor tornadoes afterwards, the effect on the people is not boils. Though there may be some cases where a tornado has uh, affected the water supply and diseases come from that, that's possible. So, a loss. Job lost a lot. <clears throat> That's an evil. Death is evil. Now death is not sin. The wages of sin is death. Sin causes death. The evil of murdering Jews is murder. The, the, the sin of Esther 8.6 is murdering or the want to murder. The consequences of the sin of murder, the evil is, there was a, a, there was a, there was a, a charge to kill all the Jews. Adolf Hitler did that charge. The Antichrist will do that charge. Job didn't sin. Job 1 and 2. Check it out. God had a testimony before Satan. This man is shoot evil. This man doing right. And the devil said, oh yeah? Let me at him. Job 42.11 Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. And did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. 
Job 1 and 2. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an offering of gold. Now, let me go back over here to the beginning where we started. All the evil that was upon Job. Job 2.10. But he said unto her, speaking to his wife, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Isaiah 45, 7. I form light, create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Lamentations 3, 38. Out of the most high proceeds not evil and good. Now you can't say evil is sin. Because it says here in Job 2.11, all the evil, where is it, Job 2.11, no, uh, I'm looking wrong, over all the evil the Lord had brought upon him, God doesn't sin. So, what God brought upon Job was not sin, was not the consequences of sin, Job 1 and 2. Evil is the loss of everything. And there are in lifetimes innocent people have got COVID-19. Innocent people have been their lives changed of loss by tornadoes, typhoons, earthquakes, Fires, tornadoes, flooding. What do they do that they deserve that? They didn't deserve anything. Oh, what kind of God is that? It's not God. Well, you see, yeah, evil from the Lord. But consequences of sin, and that sin goes all the way back to Adam and Eve eating that fruit that God told them not to eat. God warned Adam, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they disobeyed God. Sin came into our lives, Genesis 3. It is passed on from Adam. Oh, well, it's not fair. You got to deal with it. It's a consequence. If one of your parents or both your parents sleep around before you've been conceived, and you are conceived and born with a sexually transmitted disease, you're innocent. It was your parents. Too bad, too sad. You got to deal with it. If your mother, while you were in the womb, did crack and did drugs and alcohol, and as a baby you are born with the addiction to crack and, and all that, and I've seen the pictures. The innocent baby. That's sin. That is the consequences of sin. And sometimes we suffer the consequences of sin, though we didn't sin. We got a thing called secondhand smoke. Didn't smoke, got cancer. We got many cases, nesosemioma. That's the best I can say. There are men and women who work with asbestos in shipyards and everywhere. My own dad. And then come to find out later on that nesosemioma is a cancer of the lungs or, or a disease of the lungs from working with asbestos. You did your job, you went to work, and you did a great job doing your job. Great. Consequence, you ended up with a diseased lung. That's not fair. Life is not fair. No one said life was fair. You got to deal with it. You got to overcome it. 
you got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And even when you are saved and you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, that doesn't stop your sin. Listen, I struggle with sins. I struggle with one particular sin in my life. And I wish I didn't do it. I wish I didn't think about it. I've got to get the victory of God. I've got to get the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've got to move on in my life. And I can't let that sin destroy me for living for God and living. And when a tornado or loss has come into your life, there is a time of grief. But you can't have your grief go into depression. Where you can't and won't do anything for God. Or won't do anything for you yourself. you got to come out of it. Loss is a consequence of evil. Pain, suffering, and misery. Psalms 23.4 And realize, while you're going to Psalms 23, 4. When you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved and you are absent from the body and present with the Lord when you die. Or the rapture. Now God's not going to wipe away our tears into Revelation 21 or 22. But after we are with the Lord. There's no evil... Well, then again, you got to think about it. What about the judgment seat of Christ? What about the consequences of our living for ourselves and not Jesus? Wood, hay, or stubble. What about the consequences at the great white throne judgment where our, we are going to weep because we did not tell people, and we're not 100%, we're not like Paul, Paul says, I have, I have not refrained to tell everybody about the God. Something to that fact. When we get into New Jerusalem, there will be no more pain, no more misery, no more death, no more consequences of sin, no more sin. That comes of a surety through Jesus Christ alone in New Jerusalem. Right now, I've got two wives that died. There are no more pain. There are no more misery. There are no more suffering. They won't have to come. But they're going to have consequences, as I will have consequences, and as you will have consequences at the judgment seat of Christ when we get wood, hay, stubble. And when I'm at the great white throne judgment, and I'm not there, me being judged, but when I am a witness at the great white throne judgment, and there are people that I told, I did not witness to, I did not give a gospel tract, I had the Holy Spirit say, witness to them, I said, well, no, because I sized them up. I'm going to be weeping. My consequences of my suffering at the at the great white throne judgment because I did not witness like God told me to do. That's a consequence. My wood, hay, and stubble at the judgment seat of Christ for all the things I've done in this flesh for me with no regard to Jesus Christ. That's the consequences of sinning. As the same sin of not going all the world preaching the gospel will be at the great white throne judgment as me a witness to those people that I did not tell about Jesus and they go off into the lake of fire that burns forever. That's a consequence. And I feel a sneeze coming. I apologize. Suffering, pain, and consequences came because of Adam and Eve taking that through. Now, am I supposed to go off into a monastery and seclude myself for the rest of life and, and, and lay on a mat with a pillow and a candle for the rest of my life? Absolutely not. And if I sin, I'm to confess my sins. 
And I'm to move on in victory. Psalms 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The wages of sin is death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. A familiar passage. What a more comfort in trials, in the tribulations, in the suffering, and whatever life will throw at you, that God, the devil, and yourself, whatever the consequences and whatever the sin, whatever the, the, the suffering, pain, and, and agony brought by God, because we saw God brought it to Job, whatever the devil brought, we saw the devil bring it upon Job, or even our own selves. When you are a saved Christian today, and at the times of Psalms 23, a man of God under the law, David, that when you are absent from going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, Jesus said, I will never forsake thee or leave thee, and he'll never forsake or leave you in your death path. You're not alone. And when you're reading the book of uh, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, he's got many errors. It's a good book. It's not the Bible. And there are many errors in, the, in Pilgrim's Progress. And one of the errors he has is when Pilgrim Folly crosses that river of death, and then he goes into that water alone, and then comes out the angels, you know, minister to him and bring him up to the gate, and he's got his witness and all that. You don't go through the water of death alone if you're a child of God. God goes in it with you. You do not have to fear. Fear is not an option. Though we apply this option. God does not want us to fear. We're to be fearless. How many times? Fear not. Don't fear this man. Don't fear the enemies. Fear the Lord. Fear is a free will action. We can fear the right God or we can fear the evil, everything brought on by self, the world, and the devil. To fear the Lord to begin the wisdom. The fear of anything else is a hindrance. <clears throat> Death itself is an evil. It's not, it's not sin. Death is the consequences of sin. The wages of sin is death. It ends our earthly life. And if, as a child of God, we move on into glory and not hell. I'm talking to saved people. The Old Testament saints, we are told, went to Abraham's bosom. And the saved Christian is absent from the body and present with the Lord. There is to be no fear or should be no fear for the Christian. Because we're only moving to the better place. So the evil here is death itself. And why did that baby die? Why did those people in 9-11 die? God. God. No, not God. Not even the devil. When Adam and Eve took that fruit, the wages of sin is death. And by the way, Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. I know we use it witnessing the lost people. Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. The wages of sin... The, re uh, yeah, the, the wages of sin is death. The reason why you die because you're a sinner. Oh, the, 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 the baby was ours. Listen, I had a brother that was born October 13th, died that day, October 13th. And I believe he didn't even leave. He didn't live hours. And if he lived hours, he did not live a day. 
he died the same day. How many hours? Robert did not sin, yet he died. And Robert died as a sinner, not doing sins, but because he was born of the family of Adam and Eve. You say, well, no, he was born of your parents. Yeah, he was born of my parents. And my parents were born of parents who were born of parents, of born of parents. And you can go all the way back to the parents of Adam and Eve. It's not God that kills the little baby. It's not God that kills the people. It is the evil called death brought to you by sin. And death, the consequence of, of sin, the evil of death is the consequence of sin, will touch innocent lives, it will touch guilty lives, and yet the innocent lives are not innocent because they're sinners too, regardless of age or mental capacity. A baby that is, is stillborn minutes, hours, days, weeks, few years old that never sinned, never committed sin and dies and blamed, by, blamed God for. The reason why that baby died is because that baby was born into sin. And those children, let me assure you, a little another study but when those children die not sin, not occupied in sin they have no accountability to their sin because they have no knowledge of their sin they go to glory they go to heaven it's only a point when that child acknowledges that I have sinned against a God We're not going to, that's a whole other study. Psalms 40, verse 14. Psalms 40, verse 14. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backwards and put to shame that wish me evil. Ah, excuse me. <clears throat> There are people who want others, saved or lost, to be put to the worst. Get their just desserts. I hope it happens to them as it, as you know. Many people do not have the best interest in others. That was Haman. Adolf Hitler, the Antichrist. That they should have. Many will not want you to have the best. References John 7 7, 15 18, 1 John 3 13, Matthew 24 9, Luke 21 17, and 2 Timothy 3 12. The evil is here when you wish upon others. I wish you dropped dead. I wish your life was miserable. I hope God rewards you for the evil that you're doing. That's a sin. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. The Bible says we're to love our enemy. John says we're not to hate the brethren. And the evil is when we wish upon when you when you wished upon you by others i'm sure that there's a third of the people at the farmers market that we preach at because there's there, there's a third of people they enjoy what we do they love it and there's a third of the people they could care less they don't even pay attention they don't even know and then there's a third that don't like us hate us despise us and there's a, those third of the people, I wish he'd go, I wish he'd die, I wish he'd just shut up, I wish God would, would shut that mouth forever, I wish, that's an evil. But Christian, when, when you have 
your neighbor despise you. I wish he. When another Christian has upset you, I wish they. Your evils wished upon you by others, and your evils when you wished upon others by you. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 2. Last one. Keep going to the right. A man to whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor. Well, God gives evil. God maketh poor. God giveth riches. So that he wanted nothing for his soul of all that he desired. He's got everything he wants. That was Solomon. That man that said, oh, I am just rich. I'm going to tear down my barns. I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to sit back and relax. And, oh. and the rich man that Jesus told us that went to hell. There was that young rich ruler. And there are people who past, present, and yet future. There are people, they're, they're abound in riches. And they have no need. Yet God has not given the power to eat thereof. But a stranger eat it. This is vanity and an evil disease. And an evil disease, not, you know, the doctor said, you know, well, your test results, you got. Solomon said, here is a person they're rich, they got all capabilities. And yet the capability they don't have is the capability of being able to eat. Medical condition that you need IVs. My grandpa had a t had a thing one time, I forget what it was, but he had a stomach tube and he had this, this shake kind of thing that you would have to put into the stomach tube for him to eat. I mean, he couldn't taste it. It just was nourishment value. It's an evil disease, a man in his wealth. But his health is gone. And he cannot even enjoy eating but others do. And when you've read the life of Elvis Presley by his uh, bodyguard. And according to what they wrote, the guy needed pills to go to sleep, the guy needed pills to get up, the guy needed pills to eat, the guy, he just, he could not enjoy his life and his money and his fame for his health. And I, I hope I got right. Howard Hughes, I think it is. I'm not sure if that's the one. Okay. But the guy was rich, and in his death, they found him dead, and he was just shriveled up. And there are rich people who, who are past, present, and future who have riches. And yet, because of medical and physical and emotional distress, disease, they couldn't just they couldn't enjoy their riches. They couldn't enjoy their food. They got so nervous and so much anxiety of their fame and wealth and, and riches. They, they they couldn't stomach they had ulcers. They had nervous conditions. They had anxiety. These are people who have had it all, and in many cases. The all they had caused the extreme metal conditions of lesser diet, a liquid diet, and a life that's not normal. You know, God gives you riches and, and wealth and honor. He, he gives it to you as a must for a child of God, though many are not, some are. J.C. Penney was a child of God and he was rich. And there are men in their sins and their wickedness that God has given them riches and wealth and honor. 
and they blew it. There is no enjoyment of the fruits of their labor for whatever causes. There is distress, there is disease, there is medical ailments, there is anxieties, whatever it is, they cannot enjoy what God's given them. And that's an evil. And that concludes number 33 of our series. Next week.